My name is Gene Felice. I am the curator for this show, uh, Pushing the Envelope, Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. I've also been a volunteer for the Bob Moe Foundation as a volunteer art director, a volunteer creative guy, uh, many different hats that I've worn. Um, but this particular show really goes to the root of what I love to do, and it's exactly what I'd love to do with the Moe Foundation more in the future. So we're standing right now in front of uh, a piece that I collaborated with David McConville on. We call this piece Creation Story. And this piece really gets to the root of frequency and sound and vibration and kind of the electrical current that goes through everything in life that connects all of us uh, throughout the cosmos. And so what you're looking at here is you're looking at uh, a series of cymatics experiments. And cymatics basically take the electrical frequencies of sound and pass them through physical objects. And in this case, we're passing sound through sand that vibrates on a plate. And as those vibrations pass through the material, patterns appear. And it's pretty amazing the range of patterns that you can get depending on the different hertz frequency levels that you're at. It's almost like each octave or each range of hertz uh, produces a different range of patterns. And these patterns can also be found in nature. And that's what's so interesting, making the different connections between frequency, matter, life, the cosmos, and beyond. That's what we're alluding to with these images um, on the screen here. We're trying to just help the viewer make connections between themselves and the universe, the greater universe beyond. And so you'll find everything from images of the, uh, the uh, mandala patterns of the Buddhists to uh, different imagery from the cosmos, images from NASA, images of diatoms at a uh, molecular level. So there's all sorts of different connections. It's different scales going on here. It is with a theremin set up through water. And so the frequencies is a very direct and wonderful way to kind of interact with the cymatics because you don't have to touch anything. It's the beauty of the theremin is you interact with their electromagnetic fields. So again, we're dealing with one kind of frequency field, one kind of way to interact with sound and electricity and current and passing that through into this pool of water. And then you'll see the patterns start to emerge as I start to interact with the field. really fun to watch children kind of learn that direct connection by actually seeing the matter being moved through the position of their hand or through the volume of their voice and then also to kind of see the greater circle of life and energy and frequency through the imagery that David McConville put together and uh, it was a really wonderful collaboration. His ideas really informed a lot of the directions in my experiments and then my experiments kind of inform which directions he'd go with the imagery and um, yeah, I look forward to collaborating with him again. This next piece is a large, very large, interactive pyramid, theremin, sculptural combination. This is by Gabriel Schaefer and Sean Oldman. And it's a really fun multi-person theremin kind of interactive sound experience. So one person on one side of the of the pyramid, the other on the other. And together they can play it in, in kind of a collaborative effort. So this side will control the volume, just like on a theremin, and the other side will control the pitch. And together they can actually do this interactive two-person kind of dance performance uh, sound experience. And it seems to really draw people in. They want to know what's going on with this mysterious pyramid. Gabriel added some of his own kind of tagging uh, graffiti style art to the inside of the pyramid, so it just adds another layer of detail. And this is actually a really fun piece. This is by Bridget Elmer. She's a local letterpress artist, but one who brings new forms of technology into it. So she actually created these patterns with a program called Processing. And Processing is this beautiful open source 
program out there that allows you to create generative artwork. And so she took the different words, A, D, S, R, and fed them through various pattern generating um, kind of algorithms through processing and created all of these visual patterns that are going on here. And some are very simple and some become layered with the colors and they become, begin to undulate to me kind of like waveforms. So you get this ADSR and you kind of pass through it and your eyes go into some of the lighter areas and out of the darker areas. And um, it also kind of serves as a score. Uh, during the opening, we had a synth set up here and people could actually play as they're inspired by the images that are coming or the patterns that are coming out of the, the various combinations of ADSR. And so she had a, a just a beautiful interpretation. And then one last little detail that I love is they're actually hung with little magnets. So again, bringing in the electromagnetic, even up to the point of holding up the paper. And um, you know, she put a few into book form here, another one into accordion form. But I really love this just kind of alternative approach to the words A, D, S, R, what it means, attack, decay, sustain, release, but maybe not in the very literal, scientific, or sound-based realm, but much more in like a visual arts realm and about rhythm and waves and frequency and whatnot. So a very unique interpretation. This was actually by um, Brooke Pretty, Janice Lancaster, Kima Moore, um, and Adam Larson. This is a wonderful co cross collaboration between different artists, between visual, sound, and performance based artists. And basically, what's going on here is we have a dress that has been attacked with clay and it decayed very quickly into a dried state. It has sustained in that state throughout the entire month and it actually has a speaker inside of it that has sound from Kima Moore uh, kind of pulsing as you progress and it's just been the sustain of the decay throughout the entire month of the show little particles have broken off and fallen to the floor underneath and then on the closing of the show this Saturday on the 30th then we're going to release the dress and Janice is going to get inside of this dress and actually perform within it and kind of release it from its bonds of the clay. And we're hoping for an explosion of clay and dust and, and everything else out into the, back out into the world and kind of release the clay back to the atmosphere. But it's just this beautiful installation piece and I really love that the sound kind of emanates from inside and the core just has this soft little vibration going on and has this soft little vibration happening to the dress itself. It's got just a presence, it adds a, a little bit of a sound feel to the space. There's this constant little throbbing, a little electro vibration going on. And again, this is a kind of a non literal interpretation of ADSR. It's, it's not about the, uh, so much about the electronic music side of ADSR, but uh, very much just a, an artistic interpretation of what those words mean. But it also kind of all feeds back. I mean, it's, it's a life cycle to sound as much as it's a life cycle to a physical object. This is some beautiful photography by Sean Hollingsworth. And Sean has been a volunteer for the Moog Foundation and uh, he just created some beautiful imagery. He actually took the envelope generator from a Moog modular and he set this up in a beautiful kind of studio setup with a pure white background. And he just went after the beauty of the circuits themselves and the aesthetic of all of these colors and all of these little bits of the different circuits. And uh, I just love it. I love being able to go in here and see this much detail. I want to touch it. It's just got this tactile quality to it. It makes you want to start turning the knobs. And it just makes you realize how much color and how much beauty there is inside these machines as much as there are on the outside. Everyone always thinks about the aesthetic beauty of the outside of these, but the inside, it just makes your mind boggle how all this can go together to actually create a sound or influence a sound or shape a sound. And so I think Sean really kind of captured the inner world and the outer world of Bob's legacy and Bob's inventions in a very unique way. It obviously gives you this beautiful kind of spectrum color and um, electrical possibility. And right here we have an original low modular. Um, it's wonderful to see one of these in real life. It's a, it's a beautiful thing and it belongs in an art museum because again, it's just such a beautiful um, collaboration between engineering, um, 
science, sound, art, all rolled into one. And we also kind of the opposite of a really large modular, we have the micro mode. So from the really big to the really small, this is just a great classic. It's got this kind of 70s style, all these wonderful little simplified knobs and little switches. And the idea that you could just pick this up and roll with it and walk away as a musician. Again, and I think this really illustrates Bob's um, attention to the tools and to the uh, instruments that musicians needed. And we also tried to educate a good bit about what the ADS are, what the envelope, uh, what they're both all about. And so we have this wonderful range of some of Bob's schematics and his circuitry and one of his articles from the Encyclopedia of Applied Physics on kind of what the technical principles of musical tone production with the envelope, what that means. I had a wonderful um, opportunity to create a graphic based on the science of ADSR and based on what it meant to Bob and kind of just breaking it down into a very simple infographic. And so I hope that that also helps other people kind of understand what attack, decay, sustain, or release means in the envelope uh, kind of format and structure. And that's what I love about the connection of it. That brings in that whole interdisciplinary side of what an art show can be. It doesn't just have to be uh, the very techy side. It doesn't just have to be the very fine art side. It can be a combination of many things. It can be a performer. It can be a sculptor. It can be a musician. It can be an engineer. And all these people can come together. And I think that kind of represents at least some of the philosophy of Bob Moog himself, of this idea of, you know, he was an inventor, he was a tool maker, he was an engineer, he was a musician, he was a gardener, and all of these things all fed each other into like a very unique, very creative, very inventive life, and obviously a legacy that has gone on to feed the creativity of artists across all genres, musicians across all genres, engineers, inventors, I mean, his legacy just goes on and on.